Okay, guys, it's time for another round one matchup of May Madness. And this uh, particular game interested me, and I also remember getting a comment on it, so I decided to go ahead and put a video out in this round for this game. It's the Big Red Machine, the 1975 Cincinnati Reds, taking on the 2001 Seattle Mariners, who won 114 games during the regular season, but got derailed in the playoffs. Um, so... Sit back and relax and get ready for the Reds versus the Mariners. Starting pitchers in the game will be Don Gullett for the Reds and Freddy Garcia for the Mariners. And we'll be right back with the starting lineups. Okay, starting lineups for the 75 Big Red Machine Cincinnati Reds. Leading off and playing third base will be Pete Rose. Batting second and playing right field is Ken Griffey. Batting third at second base is Little Joe, Joe Morgan. Batting cleanup is Tony Perez, and he'll be at first base. Batting fifth, the catcher, Johnny Bench. Batting sixth is the left fielder, George Foster. Batting seventh is the designated hitter in this game, Dan Dreesen. Batting eighth is the center fielder, Cesar Geronimo. And batting ninth, playing shortstop, Dave Concepcion. Those are the Cincinnati Reds. For the Seattle Mariners, leading off will be right fielder Ichiro Suzuki. Batting second, playing left field is Stan Javier. Batting third and playing second base is Brett Boone. Batting cleanup is the designated hitter Edgar Martinez. Batting fifth is first baseman John Olerud. Hitting in the number six slot is center fielder Mike Cameron. Batting 7th is the catcher, Dan Wilson. Batting 8th is the 3rd baseman, David Bell. And batting ninth and shortstop, Carlos Guillen. And that's the Seattle Mariners. Now these lineups were taken for Seattle from their one of their championship games. So I'm kind of using the lineup that they used against a left-handed pitcher when they faced the lefty in the playoffs. I believe it was Andy Pettit. That's the lineup that Seattle used, so that's what I'm using. And for the Reds, I'm using the lineup they used in the 1976 World Series against a right-handed pitcher. So the designated hitter fit in very nicely. Okay, we're just about ready to go here. And I did take the liberty of writing the defensive ratings on a separate sheet of paper so that I don't have to fuddle through the cards and I didn't have to take up space on my score sheet to do that. Try to keep my score sheet as clean as possible. All right, we're ready to go here in round one. Final round one game. Uh, for the videos and uh, before I post this at the end of this game I will give a recap of the entire round one so that we're ready for the Sweet 16. This is the final game of round one. It's Pete Rose against Freddie Garcia and here is the first pitch. It's a 6-4 so Freddie against the lefty 6-4 is a ground ball shortstop X and the shortstop Guillen. Guillen is a Two rated shortstop with an E14 rating. So a two rated shortstop on the D20. D20 is a 17. 17. Shortstop number two. Number 17 is a ground ball A. So easily taken in by Guillen and Rose. Grounds to short to start the festivities. 6 3 ground out, one away. And that'll bring up right fielder Ken Griffey. And Griffey. And it's a 311 for Griffey. 311 against a right hander is a strikeout. So, strikeout for Freddy Garcia for out number two. If you wonder why these Reds cards are black and or blue and white rather than having these the newer looking colors here, this is an old set that I picked up from Chris Rosen at uh, moonlightgram.com. Uh, he has a lot of the old sets if you're interested in those. And, of course, Stratomatic, the company, is not making these sets anymore. At least, I mean, they may bring them back later in a you know, reboot, but they're really not making these older sets anymore. So that's why those cards look different than the more generic cards of 2001. In fact, I got both of these. The 2001 set I actually bought uh, from Stratomatic in 2001. I bought it. Actually, it was kind of embarrassing. I bought it. And I couldn't figure out how to play it. It frustrated me, so I went back to playing computer games. And then just recently, the last year or so, I started to uh, get back and, and learn and get to where I liked the board games. 
and this was just still in the closet so there you go so and they're actually stayed in pretty good shape I try to keep them in uh, in the little folders to keep them you know in decent shape so they're stolen up pretty well Joe Morgan now with two outs in the base is empty it's a 3-8 3-8 for Morgan is a walk and he did a lot of walking back then so Morgan with a walk and of course he has been known to steal a base or two so let's check the defensive hold ratings. Freddy Garcia is a zero hold rating, so he adds nothing to the festivities. Dan Wilson's a minus one for his throwing. And since Morgan is a double A stealer, he is going to be subtracting two by the fact that he's held. So his one to 17 drops to a 15, and the minus one from Wilson drops it to a 14. So one to 14, he will make it. So. Morgan's going to take that chance to try to get in scoring position. He needs a 1 through a 14. And the D20 rolls a 17, so he gets gunned down by Dan Wilson. We'll call it 2-4 since the right-hander was at the plate. So Wilson gunned down one to Brett Boone, and that's going to do it for the Reds here in the first. We go to the bottom of the first with the score. Cincinnati nothing, Seattle coming to bat. Okay, Don Gullett on the hill, and Ichiro at the plate. And as I've been doing for all these games, Seattle is the home team in name only as far as they get the last at bat, but the game is not being played in the kingdom. This is being played on a neutral field, so there are no ballpark effects and there are no clutch effects, and no super advanced effects, just simply the uh, advanced versions. So Suzuki, lefty against Don Gullett, the lefty. So let's see what happens here. It's a 4-4 for Gullet against a lefty, and that's an N home run. However, Ichiro is a W in the power department against a lefty. In fact, he was W on both sides. He's more of a slap hitter. So it's strictly a single for Suzuki. It would have been a star star, but nobody's on base. So Ichiro gets on, and he's actually a really good base stealer as well. He's a double A steal rating. So let's look at Gullet here. Gullet's a hold rating of negative two. And we know Johnny Bench can throw. He's a minus four. So that's a minus six, but you can only by rule go minus five. That's as much as you can deduct. So the one through 17 with a minus five is a one through 12. It's being held to be a one to 10. So 50-50 shot, they're gonna take it. Ichiro says, why not try it? One to 10 and he'll be safe. It's a three. He made it. So Ichiro stole on Johnny Bench. He took the chance, and it worked out. He's in scoring position with nobody out. And that'll bring up Stan Javier, switch hitter, batting against, batting right-handed against the left-handed gullet. Here's the pitch. It's a 5-8. Five, 5-8 eight. Five, eight against the right-hander. It's a ground ball shortstop X. Concepcion's a number one rated shortstop. So a one-rated shortstop, Concepcion. It's an eight. That might be in the error range. Let's see here. Yes, it is. Eight to 12, we go to the error range. Concepcion is an error rating of 20. So we're checking E20 here. So he needs a seven through a 12 to make the out. Anything under a seven, it's going to be an error. So we'll roll the white die just in case it's needed. And he got a nine, so that's going to be the out. It's a ground ball A. And with a runner on second, ground ball eight is short. He's going to have to hold. And Ichiro will stay at second base as Concepcion makes the play. One away. And Javier unable to advance the runner. Now that brings up Brett Boone. Brett Boone, the batter. It's a 6-7 for Boone against a lefty. Against a lefty. Gullet against a right-handed batter. 6-7. Six, 6-7 seven. Six, seven is a strikeout. So Gullet. Rares back and strikes out Brett Boone as he tries to get out of this early mess. And that'll bring up Edgar, the DH, Edgar Martinez. Lefty on righty matchup against Gullet. It is a 4-8. So Gullet against a righty, 4-8 is a walk. So he walks Edgar. First base was open, so may not hurt him too bad. But now he has to face a very good hitter in John Olerud, although it is a lefty on lefty matchup. So here's Olerud. Two outs and two on, and it's a 6-8. Six, 6-8 eight. Six, eight against a lefty is a line out to first baseman Tony Perez. So 
Olerud hit it hard, but right at Perez, and he snags it for the out. So after one complete here at neutral field, the score is Cincinnati nothing and Seattle nothing. Okay, Tony Perez steps up, to lead off against Freddy Garcia, and it's a 1-4 for Perez against a righty. That's a ground ball to shortstop. So it's a grounder to Guillen for out number one. One away, and that'll bring up Johnny Bench. He uses blue emu and doesn't stink. So here he is. It's a 1-7. One 1-7 seven. One seven is a split chance, but not much of a chance. He has to get a 1 to get a single. Anything else is a line out to Guillen at short. So he's looking for a 1, but probably won't get it. He did not. It's a line out to Guillen. For out number two, and Bench is retired, so two up, two down, and here is George Foster, power hitting left fielder. It's a 6-5, so we're off of Garcia. 6-5 is a ground ball to shortstop X again, and Guillen, of course, is a number two, which we've already checked once, so he is a two-rated. So D20 says on a two-rated, it's a 16, shortstop number two, 16 is a ground ball A, so... They're keeping Guillen busy over there. That's his third assist. And the inning's over, three up, three down. We go to the bottom of the second. Still no score. As Mike Cameron now will lead things off for the Mariners against lefty Don Gullett. Cameron, center fielder. It's a 1-10. 1-10 against a lefty. He gets plunked. He gets hit by the pitch. So Mike Cameron gets plunked by Gullett. Probably didn't feel good, but Gullet plunks him, and Cameron's a good base dealer. He's a 1 through 17, so we're back to the same thing. The 5 reduction from the from Gullet and Bench makes him down to a 12. He's being held on. That makes him down to a 10. 1 through 10, he will steal it. They're going to try it. So they got to try to manufacture some runs. So let's see here, and he's a 1 through 10. And he gets it. He gets a 2, even though the roll is way over here. It is a two, so how about that? The Mariners now are two for two on stolen bases against Johnny Bench and Don Gullett. The D20 has been kind to them. Now that'll bring up Dan Wilson. So Dan Wilson is up, and he's a good bunter. He's an A-rated bunter, so we're going to sacrifice here. So we'll pull out the advanced sacrifice chart, or advanced strategy chart, sacrifice bunt style, when the corners are in, which they would be right now, it's going to drive him down to a B rating. So we're going to roll two D6s and check the B rating under Sacrifice Bunt. It's a 7. So we go to the Sacrifice Bunt chart, letter B. Number 7, batter is thrown out by first baseman, runners advance. So it's a Sacrifice hit. We'll call it 3-4 as Joe Morgan was covering. And with that out... Cameron now moves over to third base with less than two outs. He's at third with one out, so a sacrifice fly could score him. A grounder if the infield's not in. So let's see here. The Reds, they're going to play the infield back because they trust their offense. Still early, second inning, and they don't want to give up a cheap run by giving, or a cheap couple of runs by letting the floodgates open on an infield uh, hit with the infield in. So here's Bell against Gullet. 6'10", 6'10", 6'10", is ground ball, third base, X. So that's Pete Rose at third. Rose is a three-rated third baseman, which is average. So we'll check the D20 here with a number three rating. And it's a one, so that's not good. Those low numbers on these defensive checks are not good at all. So a three-rated with a one is a single star star. So infield in or not, that would have been a base hit. So, base hit for Bell, and that brings in Cameron, and the Mariners grab a one to nothing lead. So, whether the infield was in or back, didn't matter. That would have been a run either way. So, here's Carlos Guillen now. He steps up with one out and Bell at first. It's a 212, 212 against a lefty. Ground ball, second base A, so he grounds it to Morgan for a 463 double play. So a 4-6-3 double play ends the inning. But the run does score. 
And after two complete, it is Seattle one and Cincinnati nothing. And now designated hitter Dan Dreesen is up for the Reds as they try to counter that run. So let's see what Garcia can do with Dreesen. It's a 6-7 against a lefty. 6-7 is a ground ball second base X. And second baseman Boone is a 1 and an E11. So he's a very good second baseman, rated number 1. And if it goes to an error, he's an E11. It's an 11, so he could go to an error. Let's see here. Second base. Yep, 11 falls in the 8-12 to 12 split, so we're going to go to the error rating. And again, he is an E11. So if you look at E11, E11, if it's a 3 through 5, he makes an error. So anything above a, above a 5, he needs a 6 or higher. 6 or higher, he will make the play. And it is an 11, so he made the play. Ground ball out for Dreesen, 4 to 3. One away, and that will bring up Cesar Geronimo. As Garcia is rolling along so far, first time through the order. Here is Geronimo. It's a 1 8 against a righty, and that's a single. Single star, star, but nobody's on base. So it's a base hit for Geronimo. And now he may be thinking about running. Uh, he's a steal rating B, 1 to, seven, one to 16. And Garcia, again, with a zero hole rating, minus one for the catcher, would take him to a 15. Being held on drops him 2 to a 13. So we're looking at a 1 to 13 chance. So Geronimo is going to take it. 1 to 13, he will steal. It is a six, so he made it. Stolen base for Geronimo as he gets into scoring position with one out for Dave Concepcion. So Concepcion with a chance to drive home the tie and run. Here is the pitch. It's a one eight. One eight is and he's done it. It's a single star star. So Concepcion on cue. Base hit. And Geronimo motors around to score to tie the ball game at one apiece. And now Concepcion is even a better base runner than Geronimo was. So he's got the 1 through 17 starting. So we'll drop 2 for being held to a 1 to 15. And we'll drop 1 for Wilson being a minus 1. So it's a 1 through 14 chance for Concepcion to steal. And he does it with a 2. So Concepcion. The Reds say, anything you can do, we can do just as well, if not better. And they steal two bases this inning. Concepcion gets sc scoring position as the go-ahead run, potentially. And that'll bring up Pete Rose, top of the order. Chance to drive home Concepcion. It's a 1-9. And a 1-9 is ground ball first base A. So the good thing he did steal, because that would have been a double play. Instead, it's a ground ball to first. Rose with the ground out for out number two. Does move Concepcion to third with the ball he being hit to first base like that. But there are now two outs. And here is Ken Griffey. Ken Griffey with Concepcion, the go-ahead run at third. And Griffey, a 5'10 against the lefty for uh, Garcia, is a fly out to center field. Remember, we're not using ballpark effects, so it's simply a fly to center. Cameron takes it in. Inning is over, but the Reds pick up a run to tie the score thanks to some of those stolen bases. And we go to the bottom of the third, score tied. Cincinnati won, Seattle won. And we're back to the top of the order for Ichiro Suzuki. Ichiro singled and stole second his first time up, but then was stranded there. It's a 5-5 five, five against Gullet. 5-5 five, is a split chance. 1-7, he gets a single again. So he is looking for a 1-7. Gullet's looking for something bigger. It's a seven, so it is a base hit. Ichiro ekes it out. And you know what? He's just vain enough to try that stolen base again. So we recalculate once again. It's a one to 17. He's reduced two for being held, which is a one to 15. And we know that Bench and Gullet combined for a minus five to make it down to a one to 10. So it's a one to 10 chance for Ichiro to make it. And he does with a two. So it's a second stolen base for Ichiro. Tell you what, Bench is going to need some blue emu on his arm if they keep running like this. All right, here's Javier now with a chance to put the Mariners back in the lead. 
Here's the pitch. It's a 4-10. 4-10 against right-handers is a fly ball to center field X. That is Geronimo. Cesar Geronimo, he's a 1 rated first baseman, and he's got a minus 5 cannon for an arm. So let's see what he does here. Center fielder 1. It's a 13. 13. Center field 13. Barely makes it without being going to the error rating. It's a fly ball C. Now the C says that it would have been... Now it says runner's hold. B is the sacrifice fly one, not, not the C. So it's a fly ball to center field. And we have a feline interruption here, folks. One second, please, while I remove the feline intervention. One second. There you go. All right, now, back to where we need to be here. Some Stratomatic, not with Kittymatic. All right, Brett Boone is up, and Suzuki is still at second base. Brett Boone. It's a 5-3 against a right-hander, and that's a fly ball to left field X, so we're going to check George Foster. He's a 2-2. Two. Two. So we'll see what happens here. It's a 13. That could go to the error range. We'll see. Left fielder, number 2. 13, it is in the error range. And Foster's an E4. So right here, E4. Uh, wow, he better get a 5 through 10 or it's going to be an error, I believe. So let's see here. He needs a 5 to 10 to make the play. And he got it. He got a 10. So he just did make it. He just did make it. The 10 is a fly ball B. Would have been a sack fly, but the runner's only on second, not on third. So he'll have to hold there with the play in left field. So now there's two outs, and Suzuki is still at second base, and Edgar Martinez, the batter, he walked his first time up. Gullet with the pitch, 5-6. Five, 5-6 six. Five, six is a strikeout, and of course the dot means point of weakness, but we're nowhere near that. It's simply a country fastball from Don Gullet to strike out he, uh, Edgar and at the end of three complete, we're still tied. Cincinnati won and Seattle won. Okay, little Joe, Joe Morgan to lead off the top of the fourth. He walked and was caught stealing his first time up. This is a 3-7. Three 3-7, seven. Three seven, he's gonna walk again. Look at all those walks he has in column three on his card. So, and same with uh, against lefties. So he did a lot of walking and guess what? He's gonna be trying to steal again. First you don't succeed, you try, try again. And again, we've got a one through 17, he's being held, so that's a one through 15. Dan Wilson's a minus one, that's a one through 14. As uh, Freddie Garcia adds nothing to that. So it's a one through 14 and he will be safe this time. And he gets it, it's a four. So Little Joe steals second base in front of Perez. So now Perez, Bench, and Foster all have a chance to drive him home. Morgan at second with nobody out. Here's Perez. It's a 4-10 against a right-hander. Is a fly ball right field B. So Morgan may have a chance to move up here, although Ichiro has a minus 5 for an arm rating. Minus 5 for an arm rating, so they're not going to try it. They're going to Discretion's a better part of Valor here, and they will wait and see if Johnny Bench can do something. All right, Ichiro's arm intimidating Joe Morgan there a little bit. Here is Bench. It's a 1-6. One 1-6 six. One six for Bench is a single to right field. So a single to right field, and Ichiro's arm's going to come into play again. Again, let's look at the runner advancement here with Joe Morgan. He is a 1 through 17, but he's being held, so that would be a 1 through uh, 16 this time. Not for stealing, but just for holding. 1 through 16. And then the minus 5 from each row is a 1 through an 11. So the question is, do they want to try it on a 1 through 11, or are they going to hold him up? You know what? They're going to hold him up because it's still only one out, and they got George Foster coming up. So they don't want to run themselves out of an inning. They could have went for it, but... Sparky had the third base coach hold up the stop sign. And now here's George Foster, and Cincinnati is hoping that Foster is Australian for home run. So here we go. It's a 212. 
212, he gets hit by the pitch. He gets plunked. So don't know if that's retaliation for gullet hitting Cameron or not, but it's a hit batter. And now the bases are loaded with one out for Dan Dreesen, the designated hitter. Dan Dreesen grounded to second his first time up. Double play is in order, though, so we'll see. Here's the pitch. It's a 5-8 against Garcia, against a lefty. Ooh, that's a good one for Dreesen. He's found some extra base territory here. It's either a triple or a double, depending on what he rolls. 1-6 to six is a triple. Anything else is a double. And he gets a 13. That's a double, so Swarkey will take it. That is a double, and that will score Morgan and Bench. Foster will stop at second base. I'm sorry, at third base. But it's a two-run double. Now runners at second and third with only one out. And it's a 3-1 Cincinnati lead. And Cesar Geronimo is up. And just like that, the Seattle infield is going to come in now because they're trying to choke off the run. Down 3-1 to one already. Here is Geronimo. It's a 1-10. 1-10 is a ground ball pitcher A. Ground ball pitcher A. And that's going to be... Runners holding, so he grounded back to Garcia for out number two, and the runners had to hold. So now it's up to Dave Concepcion, so, and the Seattle bullpen could be stirring here very shortly. So here's Concepcion with two outs and two on. It's a 1-7. A 1-7 is a split chance. 1-9 is a single. Anything else is a line out. So Concepcion's looking for a 1-9. And he got it. He got a nine, exactly. How about that? He got his nine. He got his nine. Now, it is a one-star only, so Dreesen will have to hold at third base. But Foster does score. Third run of the inning is now four to one ball game. And now the Seattle bullpen is in full gear as they can't afford to let too much go, go on here without checking... Uh, some potential bullpen uh, situations here. So Arthur Rhodes, the left-hander, Arthur Rhodes, is loosening in the Seattle bullpen. As some lefties are coming up in the top of the order for the Reds. So Garcia now on a, a short leash with Pete Rose stepping up and runners at the corners and two outs. It's a 5-6. 5-6 is a strikeout, so Garcia looked at the bullpen, got motivated, and struck out Pete Rose to end the inning. But the Reds put a three spot on the board, and we go to the bottom of the fourth with the score, Cincinnati 4 and Seattle 1. So now Mariners have their work cut out for them against ace Don Gullett. John Olerud to get things started. Olerud lined to Perez his first time up at first base. This is a 4-11. 4-11 against a left-handed batter is a fly ball to left field X. That is the vicinity of George Foster. He is a number two rated left fielder. And it's a two for the results, so that could drop in. We'll see. Left fielder two, a number two is a single. So it's a single. It did fall in. So Olerud plops one in front of Foster for a leadoff single. And that'll bring up Mike Cameron. He got hit by a pitch and scored his first time up. Threw a stolen base in for good measure. 3-5. Three 3-5 five. Three five for Cameron. He flies to right fielder Ken Griffey for out number one. So Cameron is out. And that brings up the catcher, Dan Wilson. Dan Wilson, he hit a sacrifice bunt his first time up. So this is his first official at bat. 6-9. Six 6-9 nine. Six nine for Gullet against a righty is another fly ball to Griffey in right field. So there are two away. And Cameron still at first base. I'm sorry, Olerud still at first base. He's certainly not going to steal. And here's David Bell. Two outs and Olerud at first. Bell a 1-7. One 1-7 seven. One seven against a left-hander. He's got a chance here, 1-17 to 17 for a single. It is only one star, so Olerud will only get one base. But it would keep the inning going. And he does with a 12, so Bell with a base hit. And Olerud now will stop at second base. 
Runners at first and second with two outs for Carlos Guillen. So Carlos Guillen, the batter. It's a 4-8. A 4-8 for uh, against Gullet is a walk. So Carlos Guillen draws a walk with two outs, and that loads the bases for the top of the order for Ichiro. So Ichiro is up. He's two for two with two stolen bases, and now he's up with the bases loaded and two outs. Big chance here to bring the Mariners back closer in this game. Here is Ichiro. It is a 2-11. 2-11 against lefties is a ground ball to third base. So he hits it to Rose, and the inning is over. So Ichiro chokes in the clutch. And after four complete, it is Cincinnati four and Seattle one. All right, Freddy Garcia getting back out there. They're going to stick with him. If he gets in any kind of trouble, Arthur Rhodes is ready. Here's Griffey. Griffey is a 4-8. Four 4-8 eight. Four eight is a walk. So he walked him. And how much longer will they go with Garcia? Let's see. Morgan is up. It's a 3-9 for Morgan against a righty. 3-9 is, what do you know, a walk again. He's walked every time. So it's another walk, back-to-back -back walks. And Garcia is not doing his manager any favor. We now have a right-hander joining Arthur Rose, Jeff Nelson. Jeff Nelson, the right-hander, is now loosening in the Seattle bullpen as well as the right-handers are coming up for the Reds. So... Tony Perez up facing Garcia with two on and nobody out. It's a 5-9. Five, 5-9 nine. Five, nine is trouble. That's going to be another run where they can get a double or a single, depending on the D20. 1-10 to 10 is a double, and that's going to do it for Garcia once this is over. So it is a 13, which is a single, but it's a star-star. So that will score Griffey. That will score Griffey and move Morgan to third. So runners are at the corners, and that is all for Garcia. His day is done. They're going to sit Arthur Rhodes down and bring in Jeff Nelson. So Jeff Nelson is coming in to see what he can do, although it looks pretty bleak right now. It is a 5-1 to one ball game, and there's still nobody out with runners at the corners, and Johnny Bench stepping to the plate. Infield's a double play depth. They need outs. So... Here's the pitch to bench from Nelson. He really needs a strikeout. It's a 110. 110's a fly ball to left field B. Fly ball to left field B. Fly ball to left field B, but it's not guaranteed. It's a question mark there. So question is, but it's Morgan on third, so he's pretty fast, and Javier only has a plus one arm, so they're not even gonna worry about it. That's a sacrifice fly. I'm not even sure it's worth the calculations at this point. So the run will score on the sacrifice fly. That run will be charged to Garcia. And just for kicks and giggles, we can do the calculations. Let's see here. Morgan is a 17 rating. He is uh, not held on because he's on third base, so he's going to stay with that 17 rating. And Javier is a 1, so that's an 18 rating. So we can try it here. If he rolls a 19 or 20, he would have been out. Well, it's a 19, so how about that? So I'm going to correct myself. And uh, take him out. So it's a fly ball double play. So that's what I get for assuming things, huh? All right, he is out, and he is out 7-2. to two. A little messy score sheet. Should have used pencil. Uh, don't have white out either, so not in front of me. But it's a double play. So, how often are you going to roll a 19? But oh well, the Mariners will take it. Anything to help them. So here's Foster. It's a 6 7. Hate being in those quandaries like that. 6 7 is a potential single. 1 to 15 is a single. Shouldn't get ahead of myself like that when I'm doing these games. That's 20, so that's a line out to shortstop. So he lines out to Gian. And the inning's over, but the Reds score one run, not two, just one. And we go to the bottom of the fifth with the score, 
Cincinnati 5 and Seattle 1. Okay, we can close the book on Garcia. He went four and a third innings, uh, gave up five runs, walked four, struck out two, hit a batter. I didn't tally the hits. Let me see how many hits he gave up real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like six hits. All right, so six hits, five runs all earned, walked four, struck out two. Not a pretty line at all. So now the Mariners have a bigger hole to try to climb out of. They are down 5-1, to one, and Stan Javier will lead things off against Gullet, who got out of that bases loaded situation last inning. So he's feeling pretty good about himself. And he's been given a 5-1 to one lead. So here's the pitch. It's all fives. 5-10 against a righty is a strikeout. So he found a strikeout. So Gullet. Pumped up by all these runs. Blows a fastball right past Javier. One away for Brett Boone. Brother of Aaron Bleeping Boone, I believe. So 6-3. Six, 6-3 three. Six, three for Gullet. 6-3 is a ground ball second base X. Morgan is a one rated second baseman. So we'll probably handle the play. But let's see. It's a 16, so I do believe he handled it. Second baseman number one. 16 is a ground ball A. So one second baseman grounds to another. There are quickly two outs. And Edgar Martinez, the batter. Edgar with two outs and the base is empty. It's a 5-5. Five, 5-5 five. Five, five is another ground ball second base X. So Morgan's getting the work out over there. We already know he's a number one rated second baseman. And it's a 3 Second baseman number uh, number three can be bad sometimes, but when you're number one, everything is a ground out. So, unless you make an error, so he gets to everything. So it's another four three ground out to end the inning. Three up, three down. That was a, a quick half inning. And after five complete, it's an official ball game now. Looks like it's going to rain outside, but we're inside, so don't worry about a shortened version. So we go to the sixth, and Dan Dreesen will start things off here against Jeff Nelson. Dreesen with the big double his last time up. And this is a 6-6. Six, six. So Nelson, 6-6. Six, six. Look at that. All those outs in the 6 column, and he found his walk. So yet another walk issued by Seattle Pitching. And that'll bring up Concepcion. I'm sorry, it'll bring up Geronimo. Center fielder Geronimo. It's a 5-6. Five, six, and he found another walk. Look at this. Column five has two chances for reaching base, and he found the walk. Look at all the strikeouts, and he found the walk. Tell you what, the Reds are living right today. Yet another walk. That's the sixth walk of the ball game, and we're only in the top of the sixth. Five official innings pitched. So here's Concepcion. He is a B bunter. Do they want to bunt? Sure, why not? Let's bunt. Okay, so he's going to be a C bunter now with the corners in. So let's see what a C bunter does. It's an 8. An 8. An 8 with a C bunter, a number 8. Batter is thrown out by first baseman, runners advance. So it's a 3-4 sacrifice, we'll call it, from Concepcion. And that moves up to runners to second and third. That will force Seattle to bring the infield in against Pete Rose. Rose is 0 for 3. He's grounded out twice and struck out. Nelson against Rose. The infield is in. It is a 5-5. Five, 5-5. Five. Five, five. Potential single. Potential single. 1-3 uh, to three Rose needs for a single. Anything else, it's a ground ball A, which would be a double play. It's an 18, so it's a double play. So Rose grounds into the 3-6-3 three, three double play. No, I'm sorry. It was a runner at... There were runners at second and third, so there's no double play. It's simply a ground out to Olerud. I'll get it right eventually. It takes time, but I'll, I'll do it. So Rose grounds out, and with the infield in, they had to hold, so... Still runners at second and third for Ken Griffey. This time there are two outs, so the infield is back. Normal depth. 
It's a 5-8, and this time Jeff Nelson found a strikeout. 5-8, he strikes out Mr. Griffey, senior, and the inning is over. So they finally stopped the Reds from scoring here, and we go to the bottom of the sixth. Score still 4-1, to 5-1 to one rather. And Don Gullett on the mound will be facing John Olerud. Olerud is 1-2. for two. It's a 5-6. Five, 5-6, six. Five, six, another ground ball, second base X. They're just giving Joe Morgan some a lot of practice over there. Again, he's a one-rated second baseman. A 12. That could put him in the error range, though. We'll see. A 12 for second baseman is in the error range. So Morgan's error rating is a 13. So go to E13. So he's got a few chances for an error. A 3, 4, 5, 11. 3, 4, 5, or 11 could be an error. 3, 4, 5, or 11 actually will be an error, not could be. So we got a 7. That's not, a, that's not 3, 4, 5, or 11. So Morgan makes the play for out number 1. And look at that. The last three outs have been ground balls to Morgan. Who would have thunk that? All right. Here's Mike Cameron. One out. Base is empty. It's a 1-4 against a lefty. 1-4 is a ground ball second base C again. So Morgan makes the fourth consecutive play. I don't think I've ever had four consecutive 4-3 four, ground outs in Stratomatic or any baseball game I've ever scored before. So this is kind of different. All right. That's the good thing about baseball. You always see something you never saw before. All right. Here's Dan Wilson. Two outs, bases empty. Can he ground to Morgan? That's the question. 4-3. Four, 4-3 three. Four, three for Gullet. Nope, he grounds back to Gullet himself. And Gullet is, uh, and he's, he doesn't have an error rating. He's got a, a defensive rating of uh, three. He's, he's a three rater, three rated defender. So he can't make an error. He's an E zero. But with it being a three rated, if the D20 comes up one, two, or three, it'll be an infield hit. Anything else, it'll be an out. So Wilson wants three or less. Oop, let's re-rule that thing fell off the table. All right, three or less. He didn't get it. He got a four, so he just missed it. So Wilson is out. So six complete here at neutral field, and it's still Cincinnati five and Seattle one. All right, Jeff Nelson still in there. This will be his second full inning of work. He's pitched an inning and two-thirds so far. Here is Joe Morgan, and Morgan with a 6-7, and that's a strikeout. So Morgan finally retired as Nelson got his strikeout. One away for Tony Perez. Tony Perez, the batter, and Arthur Rhodes is back in the bullpen loosening. It's a 4-7. 4-7 is a walk. He found another walk, yet another Seattle walk. Another walk issued by Seattle pitching. So that gives him eight walks on the day. And that'll bring up Johnny Bench. I'll have to go back and tally how many of those walks actually scored. Plus throwing a hit batter. So that's nine people reaching base without a hit. All right, 2-6 for Bench. 2-6 is a strikeout. So Nelson comes back to strikeout Bench. We've had strikeout, walk, strikeout. So Foster is up. The pattern continues. He'll walk. Let's see. Here's Foster. It's a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, there you go. Another walk. 6-6 six, six is a walk. Strikeout, walk, strikeout. And that is walk number nine issued by Seattle Pitching. And that'll bring up Dan Dreesen. And that's going to do it for Jeff Nelson. He is out of there. And Arthur Rhodes is going to come on with the left-hander Dreesen coming up. Okay, Dreesen facing Rhodes. 5-8. Five, 5-8 eight. Five, eight is a ground ball second base X again to Morgan. And we know that's going to be a ground out most likely. An 8. An 8 is actually in the air range. It's a 7, and that's an out. Okay, guys, sorry for the technical difficulties I ran into there. Uh, we just left it where... Uh, Jeff Nelson had went through his cycle of strikeout, walk, strikeout, walk. He just walked George Foster, and so he is being replaced now by lefty Arthur Rhodes, who will be facing the left-handed hitting 
Dan Dreesen, at least he is the scheduled hitter. But uh, Sparky Anderson is going to counter that move by bringing in a right-handed DH to take the place of Dreesen. And that's going to be Merv Rettman. So Merv Rettman will pinch hit for Dreesen here in the top um, the top of the seventh, and then he'll stay on the stay in the game obviously to continue to DH throughout the remainder of the game unless he gets pinch hit for later. But right now, Merv Ratman, two on and two out after the strikeout walk, strikeout walk. And now Rettman will be facing Arthur Rhodes. So here's a delivery from Rhodes, his first pitch of the game to Rettman. It's a 1-7. So Rettman against a lefty, 1-7 is a walk. And just for kicks and giggles, Dan Dreesen, 1-7 would have been a strikeout against the lefty. So Sparky made the right move there, going to the right-hander. And that is yet another walk, which, surprise, surprise, has been a theme of this game for the Seattle pitching staff. And now the bases are loaded with two outs still. And Cesar Geronimo, they're not going to pinch it for Geronimo because they're ahead and he's a great defender in center field. So Geronimo lefty on lefty against Rhodes. Bases loaded, two outs. It's a 3-4. 3-4 is a fly ball to right field to end the inning. So Geronimo flies out to Ichiro in right field to end the inning. No runs will score. And we've got seventh inning stretch time here at neutral field. It is the Cincinnati Reds 5 and the Seattle Mariners 1. And on for his seventh inning of work is Don Gullett. His... Pitcher reduction point of weakness is a seven, so he can get through this inning without any problem, and then we may start running into having to look to the bullpen. But for right now, he's going to go at it full board against David Bell to start things off. And for Bell, that's a 2-5, so 2-5 against lefties. It's a strikeout. So Gullet showing no signs of fatigue with the strikeout there. That'll bring up the shortstop, Carlos Guillen. He is grounded into a double play and walked. Guillen, a 5-5 against Gullet, right-hander. Another ground ball to Joe Morgan. Uh, surprise, surprise. So, Joe Morgan, we know, is a 1. The D20 roll is a 15. And a 1 with a number 15 at second base. A number 1. We have second baseman, 15 is ground ball A. So Morgan makes the play easily with two down. He may set a record for me for scoring a game with most assists by a second baseman. I have to wait and see when the game's over. All right, back to the top of the order in Ichiro with two outs and the bases empty. There, oops. That is a 4-8 for Gullet against a lefty. 4-8 is actually a single. So Ichiro with a two-out single. Now we have... He has stolen two bases already, but down five to one, you really don't want to take that chance. And we've got yet another kitty interruption here. Little Levi. Levi, come here, buddy, buddy. Come here. Come here. You need to get down, buddy, buddy, so we can finish the game. Okay, come on. Good boy. There you go. All right. He's just happy to see me. All right. Stan Javier, the batter, with each row at first. It's a 6-9, and Gullet against a right-handed batter. 6-9 is a fly ball to right. So Javier flies to Ken Griffey. Inning is over. We've completed seven. Score still remains. Cincinnati 5 and Seattle 1. All right. Arthur Rhodes still in there facing the number nine hitter, Dave Concepcion. And it's a 2-12 against a lefty. And another walk. Surprise again. I'm going to set a record for most walks by one team, I know, when this is all said and done. So Concepcion walks, and that'll bring up Pete Rose. Rose, a 6-7 against Arthur Rose. we got Rose against Rhodes. So he's a right-handed batter as a switch hitter. 6-7, it's a strikeout. So Arthur Rose dials up a K for... 
Pete Rose. And there's one away for Ken Griffey. Griffey, a 4-3. So four against a lefty, a number three is a single. So that's a base hit to center for Griffey. And Concepcion will stop at second. There is now one away with runners at first and second. And that'll bring up Joe Morgan. 5-8. 5-8 against the lefty is a ground ball second base X. So how ironic is that? Joe Morgan grounds to the second baseman. Brett Boone. And Boone's a one, so this could be good. Could be a double play. Oops, that's, it would help if I could roll the D20 and keep it on the camera view. It's a seven. It's a seven. A second baseman number one. A seven is a ground ball A, so that is a 4-6-3 double play. So a double Morgan up, which isn't easy to do, but it is a 4-6, six, 6-3 six, double play. In the inning, we go to the bottom of the eighth. Score still Seattle. I'm sorry, score still Cincinnati 5, Seattle 1. And we go to the bottom of the eighth. And that brings up the aforementioned Brett Boone. He will lead things off. Now, bullpen time for the Cincinnati Reds. Gullet has done what they've asked him to do. So now they will turn it over to their good bullpen. And coming up to pitch for Cincinnati is going to be right-hander Pedro Bourbon. So Pedro Bourbon, the right-hander, will take over for Gullet, and I'll be right back and give you the wrap-up on Don Gullet's day. Okay, we'll look at the line on Gullet. He went seven innings, pitched, faced 29 batters, gave up six hits, one run, which was earned, walked two, struck out four, and he did hit a batter, and he's certainly in line for the victory. And Pedro Bourbon, the right-hander, is on to face Brett Boone, It'll be Brett Boone, Edgar Martinez, and John Olerud, the heart of the order for Seattle. This is their inning to try to make hay if they can. So here's the first pitch from Bourbon to Boone. It's a 3-4. Boone, 3-4 against the righty is a strikeout. So Brett Boone strikes out as Bourbon gets the K to start out the ball game for him. And that's Edgar Martinez coming up. He is 0 for 2 with a walk. It's a 6-10. 6-10 is a catcher X. Catcher X and Johnny Bench is a one catcher. Being the Hall of Famer that he is, he's a number one rated catcher. It's a nine, so it's a nine, so that could be in the error range. Let's take a look here at the catcher card. And it is the catcher card nine through 12, you move to the error rating. And Johnny Bench is an E3. So if you look down here at E3, if he rolls a 3, 4, or 12, it'll be an error. 3, 4, or 12, it's an error. Anything else, he will make the play. And he rolled an 8, so he made the play. So that's going to be a 2, 3 put out on Edgar Martinez. And there's two away. And out. Seattle's running out of outs here. They're down to the last four outs. John Olerud, the batter. Olerud, a 1, 2. 1-2 is a ground ball to first baseman Perez to end the inning. Three unassisted. We'll do it. And we go to the ninth with the score still. Cincinnati 5 and Seattle 1. Okay, new Seattle pitcher for the ninth inning, even though they're behind, is Kashohiro Sasaki. He was their closer. In 2001, he was 0-4, but he did have 45 saves. So he is in to pitch because he's right-handed for one thing, and Arthur Rhodes is probably tired after pitching what he did. And he's going to be facing right-handers Tony Perez and Johnny Bench and George Foster, three righties in a row. So Sasaki is in to face Perez. Here's the first pitch. It's a 5-8. Five, 5-8's eight. Five, a pop-out to the shortstop, Gian for out number one. And Sasaki's going to see if he can go through an inning without walking anybody. That would be a major news item. So here's Johnny Bench stepping up. Bench is one for four with a run scored. 
It's a 3-8. Three 3-8 eight. Three eight for bench is a strikeout. So Sasaki picks up the K on bench. There's now two away. And George Foster, the batter. George Foster. It is 3-8. Three 3-8 eight. Three eight is a single to center field for George Foster. So a two-out single keeps the inning going. And that'll bring up Merv Rettman, who had pinch hit for Dreesen earlier. And I don't think they're going to worry about pinch hitting for Rettman with the lefty. They're just going to go ahead and leave him in there. He walked in his only time up previous to this. It's a 3-9. A 3-9. <laughs> there you go. He walks again. The streak continues. Another walk. So Rettman walks. And that will move Foster to second base with two outs, two on. So Sasaki running into some trouble here. He went through the first two batters, no problem. Now he's in some trouble. He's got Cesar Geronimo, the batter. He is one for three with a run score and a stolen base. It's a 1-9, and a 1-9 is a ground ball to third. So he grounds out to David Bell to end the inning. It's a ground ball B, so technically it's going to be a 5-4 fielder's choice as Bell will go the short way to second. And the inning's over. So... Suzaki pitches a scoreless frame, although he did walk a batter. And we go to the bottom of the ninth, last chance for the Mariners. And Pedro Bourbon still in there, although the Reds have a lefty-righty action in their bullpen. Captain Hook, Sparky Anderson's not taking any chances. We've got uh, Raleigh Eastwick, the righty, and Will McEnany, the lefty, both loosening in the Reds' bullpen. Scheduled hitter for Seattle is Mike Cameron, the right-hander. But uh, this is the time where you could see some pinch hitting. So we'll check the Seattle bench and see who they're going to bring out. They're going to bring out Al Martin. Lefty Al Martin is going to hit for Cameron. So lefty Al Martin is going to pinch hit for Cameron as the Mariners try to pull out all the stops here in the bottom of the ninth. Martin lefty against Pedro Bourne, the righty. It's a 3-4. 3 4, he fouls out to Perez. Fouls out to Perez. One away. And just for curiosity's sake, Cameron on a 3 4 would have flied out to center. So it would have been an out either way. There's one away, and the Reds are two outs away from advancing. Schedule hitter is catcher Dan Wilson. He's 0 for, 3, 0 for 2 with a sacrifice. So they're going to look for maybe a better hitter here. And it looks like they're going to go to Mark McLemore. So Mark McLemore is going to hit for Dan Wilson. He will pinch hit here. Mark McLemore, switch hitter against Pedro Bourbon. And the pitch is a 6-2. So Bourbon against the lefty, 6-2 is a fly ball to Griffey. So there's two away. Seattle now down to their final out. David Bell, the batter, he's two for three, so they're going to go ahead and let him hit again. He's got two hits. No sense pinch hitting for him if he got two hits already. So here is the pitch. It's 2-4. Two, 2-4 four. Two, four is a fly ball to left field. Foster snares it, and the ball game is over. The Big Red Machine, the Cincinnati Reds, defeat the Seattle Mariners by the final score of 5-1. to one. And they will advance in the tournament. And we'll be right back to tally up the accounts of this game and the statistics. And I'm curious to count the number of walks that were issued by Seattle Pitching. We'll be right back with those totals. Okay, totaling up the final tallies here. For Cincinnati, five runs on eight hits, no errors. They left 12 runners on base, so it could have been a lot worse. And for Seattle, one run, six hits, no errors. They left seven. Seattle pitching walked 11 Cincinnati batters, plus they hit a batter. So 12 batters reached without the benefit of a hit. And the player of the game is going to be Don Gullett. He went seven innings to get the win, giving up only one run, holding Seattle to the one run. Offensively for the Reds, besides drawing all the walks, they really didn't do a whole lot. They scattered in some you know, timely hits. Dan Dreesen's uh, bases loaded double really was the big blow there. Uh, 
bringing in two runs. And from the DH slot, he was one for two with a walk. And Rettman, from the DH slot, walked both times he was there. So reached base four out of five times from their DH slot, even though they're a National League team. The combined DH of Dreesen and Rettman did the job. Uh, tough luck loser was Freddie Garcia, giving up uh, five runs in four and a third. And so the Seattle bullpen, Nelson, Rhodes, and Sazaki pitched four shutout innings, but a uh, little too little too late as the offense could never get going. Uh, for Seattle, they had six hits. They were all singles. And they got no one past second base. I'm sorry, Olerud made it to third in the uh, fourth inning. They had the bases loaded. Uh, a single by Olerud after two were out. Another single by Bell and a walked again, load the bases. But then each row grounded to third to end the threat. So that's it from here. Round one, Cincinnati, the Reds will advance. They will advance and take on... Uh, let me pull out the bracket and see who they're going to be taking on. Okay, so with their victory, we move 75 Cincinnati. I didn't spell Cincinnati correctly. I was doing an abbreviation there. So that's uh, part of the spelling there. 75 Cincinnati defeated Seattle, so they move on, and they will face the winner of the 1969 Baltimore Orioles against the 2000 New York Yankees. And they will... The winner of that game will face the 75 Big Red Machine in the Sweet 16. So that should be an interesting matchup no matter who they face, uh, be it the Yankees or the Orioles. Now, one thing again, remember, Cincinnati cannot use Don Gullett in this game because he pitched in this game. So he has to take at least one game off. So that means they're looking at a couple of options. Gary Nolan, most likely, is the righty would be coming up, which would be significant because... The Yankees uh, were heavy left-handed hitting lineup in the day there with Paul O'Neill and some others and some switch hitters who hit better against right-handed pitching. So if the Yankees happen to advance, that could be a factor there. Uh, the Orioles, other than Boo Powell, most of their uh, better hitters were right-handed, so that could be a good matchup for them. But that's it from here. The 75 Big Red Machine Cincinnati Reds, thanks to 11 walks by Seattle Pitching, Cruise to a 5-1 victory, and they will play the winner of the Orioles and Yankees in the Sweet 16. Hope everybody's having a great day, and we'll catch up with you later on more Round 1 action of May Madness.